Jordan Friedman. Uh, I am a former high school business education teacher and computer teacher. And I've got a class that I'm tutoring that we are creating some short stories. And I want to create this video so that everyone can learn some simple formatting techniques using Microsoft Word. So this will specifically help my students with their short stories, but it will also teach any viewer some detail, more, a little bit more insight on how to use and how to uh, best use Microsoft Office to make your document more customized to what you want versus just using a template. So first things first, if you are doing a short story, you're going to have a cover art and your cover art generally should be uh, drawn, should be black and white. You are still going to want your byline and your title on the front cover. So I'm going to go ahead and, for example, insert a picture for my cover. So I'm going to go to insert on the menu bar up here and I'm going to go to pictures. And I am going to speak uh, pretty quickly to try to honor our time here. The other thing to realize is that this is a video so you can always rewind it to get um, more uh, information if you miss something the first time. So for my cover art, we're going to pretend my story is about cats and I'm going to put a picture of my cat here. Now, my picture came in a little bit big, which is kind of good, right? It's a cover art. We want it to cover the whole page, but I also want mine to fit on my first page. So you could do some work with this picture, but since this video is not really about editing pictures, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but you can read about that on your own or learn about that on your own. One thing I will say, if you want to pre-type your text on here, I believe I can right click and let's see, I should be able to add text. The other option you can do is you can create a text box. So I can go and I'm going to click here. I can insert, so I go back up to insert and I can insert text box. So I'm going to draw my text box. I'm going to draw it right here for right now. I'm going to move it in a minute. And I'm going to copy my short story by Shannon Friedman and I'm going to drag it into my text box. Now, I don't want this box to be shown. So you have to format your box. So I'm going to click on my box. You'll see shape format as an option on your menu bar. And with my shape format up here, I'm going to look at these options. There's shape fill. This one is shape outline. I want shape outline. So I'm going to tell it no outline. I do not want that box to print. Now you can still see it, but it's not going to print. Now, what you want to notice here, and I had already fixed this and didn't erase it, but it's really important that your first letter of every word or every important word in your title is capitalized. If there was the word of in here, we'd probably not capitalize the O or the F in that case. The other thing I want to do is I want to, now it doesn't really have to be centered because no one's going to see the box. But let's say I wanted this on my cover art. I'm going to click and drag it. Um, I might have to do some finagling to deal with my shading and that would require some other lessons. So I'm not going to go into that kind of depth of detail here, but this gives you a sense of some options you might have um, if you wanted to do it that way. You can also print this and then hand write neatly your short story title and your byline. We should be able to um, actually like somehow type right on the picture, but uh, since this is not the point of the video, I will move on. All right, so one of the things you want to mention or want to make sure you know is that this title should be larger. Okay, so we're going to make this, I'm going to highlight it and select it and I'm going to make it size 14. And so now I've got to go ahead and modify my box a little bit, right? We also want the title to stand out a bit more, especially if it's going to be on top of a picture or an image. So I'm going to make it bold and I'm going to make it underline. Okay. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about style of font in a minute, but the short version is I would change this. I would not use Calibri. So I'm going to change it real quickly to Times New Roman and I will explain more about that when I go to this next page. So let me bump this back up here get my page break. I don't need three pages. Okay. So page two of your short story, 
this is uh, I'm gonna make this really small just to kind of get it out of the way I just want you to kind of be aware that this is a sample of what page two could look like so you'll see here the title of your story should be at the top of page two of your short story and you're going to want to make sure it's in proper title case so capital T uh, capital T capital S so for example like so and I was I'm gonna try to pick up my pace here so the other thing again you're going to make this larger so you're gonna probably put this again about size 14 I would also bold it and underline it again now all of this font is a little bit small see how everything else if you look it's size 10 so I'm gonna highlight everything else or you can click control A except for the fact that I already formatted the title at 14 so in this case I'm just gonna highlight but control A or command A will select all of your document it will change the font for all of it so I'm gonna choose size 12 now the reason we're gonna change the font style is that Calibri is kind of more of a new style of font but if you look at any book that's written they are almost always written in the Times New Roman style of font and I'm going to show you a sample of what that looks like but I'm going to highlight that portion click Times New Roman now I want you to look closely at that difference if you zoom in which I'm going to zoom here for you if you look at the edges like if you look at the edge of the T there's a tip on it that's the more fancy word the more slang or simple term would be when I was teaching we called it the hangy fangs so Times New Roman has the hangy fangs on the edge of each of the letters and that generally is referred to the serif font because it's got the tips on it sans serif which is like Calibri means there's no tip and most of your books or the novels you read they're all written in the serif font style and that's what we would recommend to in this case so we're gonna we're gonna select all so command a or control a and we're gonna change it to Times New Roman now the other thing we want to take care of is our spacing so again command a or control a go to the line spacing icon you can see right here on your screen where I am right now it says 1.15 you need to do two steps Microsoft Office changed their default uh, numbers of, a number of years ago now and we're going to change this in two steps 1.0 which moved it some but we've got more to go so the next step is to go to line spacing and we're going to go to before and after spacing and we're going to change it to zero and up arrow to zero we are also going to say don't add space between paragraphs of the same style so we're going to click on that also and we're going to say okay you should see a slight shrinkage of your document uh, text kind of squishing more together now notice the backwards P icon you see all these paragraph marks <clears throat> I'm gonna unclick them so you see the difference so you're seeing the proofreading or paragraph marks and uh, as long as you have pressed the return key in between each paragraph then <clears throat> when you're on the line spacing options and you click don't add space between paragraphs of the same style then it won't be a problem okay so it's really important that you do that to have everybody because since this is going to be an anthology and all of our papers are going to be combined this allows you to have similar style of formatting throughout the whole document for example we will not you will not be putting page numbers on your pages I will put page numbers or whichever parent does the compilation of all of your files it will be page numbered for the whole document okay we have a major piece we still need to adjust and that is our margins so go to layout on the menu bar you'll see the option for a layout menu so go to the layout menu and we're gonna click margins that down arrow and we want to go to custom okay you want to go to custom with custom we're gonna leave top and bottom at one top and bottom one is fine we're gonna change left and right and I'm gonna actually say we should do 1.25 I think 1.5 is gonna to be too big 
1.25. I think it's going to be better. So we're going to do that instead and we're going to say OK. Now you'll notice apply to. So again, for those of you that are doing more complicated documents, you could switch this. In our case, we want to say apply to the whole document. We're going to say OK. So you'll see it shrink up a little bit. This allows space in the margins for your binding. So you see where I'm pointing here. This is the gray area representing the margin on both sides, the right and the left. And then you'll see right here over on the left, this is showing you the top margin. Okay, so we've got those parts. Now the last couple parts, and I'm, I'm trying to watch my time here. We're already at 10 minutes again. So a couple of things, you need to insert a bio. So right here where I have insert picture, we're also gonna need to insert a new page. So again, I'm gonna go to insert, and we're gonna go to page break. So now we're on a brand new page, and right here where it says insert picture, I'm going to insert a picture. So I'm going to go to insert on the menu bar, pictures from a file, and in my case, I've already pre-selected a picture from the desktop. So I'm gonna scroll here, and it's this one here. I'm gonna say, okay, insert. Now this is a little big, I'm gonna shrink it up. Uh, just for those of you printing, you know, that can use up a lot of ink, and you may or may not wanna do that. So it just needs to be about this size here. It's a little big, I mean, there's a lot of uh, dead space in the picture, so we're gonna crop it. So if, with the picture clicked on, you can go to picture format, when you have a picture, you, you'll get a menu option for the picture. And then we're gonna go over here to the right and we're gonna choose crop. I'm gonna click on it and I'm going to crop it. Oh, as long as you don't grab it, we just wanna crop. So I'm gonna click on that little center black piece and I'm gonna crop it down. And I'm gonna also crop it on this corner. So you see if you move your mouse, you'll get this little corner crop symbol. So you can click on that and drag it up and drag it in. I wanna do the same thing over here on the right, but I don't need to go up so much. So now I'm just gonna come over here. See, watch the mouse, how it changes. You can click, hold, and shift in, okay? So maybe just a smidgen more. Well, we also wanna be symmetrical. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back over here and click on crop again. Now I'm gonna make a picture a little bigger again. But now it's just my face, not all that background noise. Okay, so we also wanna wrap our text. So with the picture still highlighted, with the picture format uh, menu bar still optioned or, or, or open, we're gonna click on the wrap text icon here and we're gonna click square. And that's gonna bring my text up here on the right. Now I wanna make sure, yes, we're all at size 12 still. This information is not actually all about me. So partly me, partly someone else. So this is how um, you should format your document to prepare for your short story. The other thing to really remember is that every paragraph or every new idea or everyone's new comment should have its own paragraph. So please pay close attention to the fact that if there's a conversation, each new person speaking gets their own new paragraph, even if it's one line. Or like down here, these are two different ideas you need to add to it, okay? Pardon me, by adding to it, I mean you should keep them as new paragraphs. All right, folks, there you go. It's not too much shorter, but it does give you an idea. I wish you the best of luck. Please feel free to check out my Excel videos. They are shorter, <laughs> only about five minutes each.